Okay. Our next speaker was not able to join us live, but thanks to Skype, we're able to bring Jim Yanazelli here virtually to share with you how he makes use of every minute of time with his students by building a student-centered classroom that blends excellent teaching practice with technology. Now, when I heard what he was doing, I knew that teachers everywhere would benefit from his tips. No matter what age you teach or what subject you teach, Jim's story is sure to give you some ideas that you can use in your classroom next week. Jim, we'd love to hear your story. Hello from New Jersey. My name is Jim Yanazelli. I want to thank Microsoft for allowing me to Skype in today. William Penn once said, time is what we, you want most, but what we use worst. What if we flip it and make it our mission to make the most of our time? Having only 40 minutes in each class, I did not want wasted time. I wanted active, engaging, and empowered time. I'm here today to share with you my journey of transforming the class by leveraging technology to maximize not just time, but also space. I'm in my first year as a technology integration specialist, but before this position, I was a social studies classroom teacher. Ever since I started back in 2005, I would try to use some aspect of technology in a classroom. However, I still felt my ideas were limited by availability. From day one, I always had to figure out how to make it work. Over the years, digital tools and resources became more readily available, but I still felt I was running into problems of time and space, and it made me feel a little defeated. But instead of throwing in a towel and doing what has always been done, I pushed myself. I learned about instructional design methods and classroom best practices to develop a blended learning experience. Time and space started to make sense. Utilizing technology is not just putting the devices into the hands of our students, it's developing a growth mindset and looking for ways to help all students learn. I want to share my experiences to be a change maker for teaching and learning in a digital environment. So about 10 years ago, I first really started using technology in the classroom. I created PowerPoints to supplement learning. I was teaching from the front of the room, connected to the computer keyboard to move the slides. PowerPoint added valuable resources to assist me with explaining content and time was getting better. But I eventually got one of those clickers and I started to move around. I was better, it was better use of space, but it still wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But just because I added additional media movement, I didn't really innovate and transform learning. I just supplemented the textbook and improved classroom management. Eventually, technology did catch up to my wants and needs, and I started to make changes to put the focus on the students' wants and needs. Moving to a student-centered classroom with emphasis on empowering students through active learning became my priority. I attended local and online workshops, read as many books as possible, visited model classrooms, and joined Twitter, which is one of the best actions I took in my journey thanks to connecting to a global professional learning network. Improving active learning started when I changed the way information was transferred in my class. I wanted the students to be more of a part of the class, and when making some changes, it improved the flow of the class through the lesson and gave me more time. I was able to modify learning to meet the needs of the students' content knowledge. So instead of using the time-consuming note-taking strategies, I found time-saving and active alternatives. I developed a type of digital note-taking based on Cornell notes. Students can add keywords or phrases, insert online pictures, and create summaries in each class. But while this made learning active, it was still mostly teacher-centered and based on content knowledge transfer. Then over time, I started to find more digital education resources to shift the focus from teacher-centered to student-centered, which were mostly free open education resources and creative commons. And just a quick side note, you can really save planning and prep time by checking out the Microsoft resources and searching by grade level, subject, and standard, because a Bing search for resources will take you down a rabbit hole for hours. Thanks to the easy search tools, I found resources that fit my curriculum perfectly. I then started exploring problem, project, and inquiry-based learning, which gave my students the ability to create instead of just memorizing facts. As I became more comfortable with these methods, my class activities were developed around thought and creation and answering questions that had multiple ways to respond and discuss. Here was my aha moment. I did not need to be the gatekeeper of information. The students worked hard and were not only engaged, but also empowered. The classroom was now theirs and they are the center of their own learning experience. But up to this point, I was not in a one-to-one -one environment either. I was still signing out any accessible tablets, laptops, streams. I was traveling to the open computer labs within the building to accomplish these changes. But I also, during this time, I kept inviting in teachers and school leaders 
to see my classroom to attain feedback and keep improving as much as I can. Then two years ago, I was fortunate enough to start a pilot program for technology integration. My classroom received 30 Windows 10 HP streams and access to Office 365. I developed a blended learning classroom using the CART model. This is a model where computers do not leave the room. Students would enter, take a computer from the CART, and return it at the end of the period. While my classroom was now a student-centered active learning experience, I now had daily issues of time and space. Getting the devices out, open, and logged in every period and returned took at least five minutes to start and five minutes to put away. With only 40 minutes of class time, I had to fix this. I decided to make a change to the way I started and ended my class. Taking out a computer and logging in is simple and does not require much more than muscle memory. You could probably take out your phone right now, put in your password, and open any app while still focused on what I'm doing. So with that in mind, I decided to have every class start with a discussion. Concepts like think, pair, share, and turn and talk are engaging and collaborative ways to get the ideas flowing, and it adds an element of social interaction in the digital world. If we were learning about George Washington, my question would already be on the front board. What are the qualities of a great leader? Five minutes after working together to develop an answer, they're logged in and they would share their answers in their one now, one note do now sections. The same concept was applied to the end of class, just reversed. At the end of every class, my objective was reframed into an excellence of question. It would be, what qualities made George Washington a great president? The students would answer in their exit ticket folders and then discuss with other students as they return the computers to the cart. So instead of all the students rushing to put their computers in at the end of the bell, they were staggered and still actively learning in the process. From here, I kept growing and learning, adding in and trying out new methods of teaching and learning. Understanding that no student learns the same way and that expression of learning can be different, I started giving the students more choices. This gave them more of a voice in my class. I figured out learning should be differentiated, personalized, and individualized. And I tried as much as possible not to give a one-size-fits-all assignment. I wanted the students to have a choice on how they create and express their ideas. Whether it was singing a song, writing, drawing, or storytelling in a sweat, every student had the ability to create, and it was a big part of their classroom experience. Students were not just restating facts. They were creating and developing ideas and explaining it to the best of their ability in any ability they could. This made the students feel very comfortable to share. And when I gave them the choice, it allowed them to show their learning in their own way. Because of all the activities and choices, another gap of time appeared. I now had to fix the distribution and transitioning. I have about five activities in each class period. And one of the most important time-saving and reclaiming actions I would do is plan and pre-distribute the materials. When the students were transitioning from one activity to the next, the material is there waiting for them. If they had to use a web page, the web page link will be there. If I had an assessment or activity, it was ready and in their folders. Everything I did, I had a plan for. I was using Teams assignments, channels, and conversations to make the process move quickly from one activity to the next. So I tackled the big picture problems, but I still had some small gaps that I decided to work on as well. I wanted to improve on how I check on learning and develop forms of assessment. One way I started saving time is by using the forms in a Teams conversation space. By typing at forms, you can make a question with a multiple choice and it would show up on the screen. The students can give a quick answer and you can have a quick formative assessment. And this also works for my do now, giving discussion time before they responded to a poll. But forms also includes a check of learning such as a short assessment with automatic grading, which gives you the opportunity to use quick formative assessment to measure learning. And now with the rubric built into assignments, you can also be transparent with your expectations and give timely feedback as well. The best part is you can then use this data to drive decision making immediately. And once I started to figure out all these time concepts, I also started to move toward working on space. Student centered learning really started with student centered design. I started building the classroom around the idea that the students are going to collaborate and they're going to have a classroom all about learning. First major changes in space is when I move my desks from rows to packs. I put students in groups of three to five, and when necessary, I would change it around depending on the activity for the students, but we always had them in groups. And then I gave the tables a name or a number, and the students knew where to get to faster, improving time. 
So when the students notice that they were working in groups, they realize that this is part of their learning and they're going to be learning and working with each other. This led to more student-centered lessons and ownership of their learning. Having students own their work transformed my need to be the sage on a stage to becoming their guide on the side, working and learning along with them. Two examples of lessons that I used that included aspects of movement and collaboration are jigsaws and gallery walks. These activities were active and engaging ways to use my whole classroom space wisely and not just limit the students to the confines of their desks. So now I was able to reclaim time a little bit better and I was able to use space a little bit better. I still had one issue to work out. This goes back to the first issue I had when I started teaching with technology, being tethered to the computer and not being able to really use space. Using space wisely has completely transformed my classroom and it was a matter of finding the best way to accomplish it. I learned that my hardware, which were the laptops and tablets, allowed me to be mobile, while my software, which was Windows 10 and Office 365, connected me. I learned about the connecting and projecting features of Windows 10. They have an internal Miracast Connect feature that allows you to connect one Windows 10 device to another device to project it through it. This allowed me to wirelessly project my display through another computer. But then I asked questions and did more research to eventually find out about ScreenBeam. Screen beam devices completely untethered me and gave me mobility in the classroom I was looking for. I don't go anywhere without my screen beam pro now. If anything needs to be projected to the front so that other students can see, such as a writing prompt or an image analysis, I was able to easily connect and display it in seconds. This means now I was able to go around with my convertible laptop without having to be stuck next to a computer. This mobility allowed me to keep myself on task and keep the students on task with limited time interruption. And this brings you to where I am now. But before I go, I wanna share with you my top 10 hack ideas to improve time and space. One, observe and be observed by coworkers and share away. Meet with your peers and gain valuable feedback. Two, get mobile. Find out about screen beam or broadcast techniques to untether and add agility to your classroom. Three, get your students mobile. Gallery walks and jigsaw activities, making new groups, and developing innovative learning experiences to get them up and out of their seat. Four, increase choice to increase voice. Try to stay away from the one-size-fits-all activities. Five, promote active learning to engage and empower your teaching and your student learning. Six, increase student collaboration and give them the ability to work together. Seven, join a professional learning network. Jump on Twitter and try monthly MSFTEDU tweet me. Eight, create an inclusive classroom that has accessibility and inclusion with learning tools. Nine, provide timely feedback, increase transparency and expectations. Try the formative assessments using forms with auto grading. And 10, most important, take a risk. It models for your students and helps you grow. And you might be surprised at what you're truly capable of. Be excellent to each other, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. That was amazing. I think all of you watching have connected with his like timeline and his process that he did. I know when I was in schools, the CART-based model always added a lot of transition time to the learning and the way that you've made the most of having a do now question that the students have to discuss while setting up the device and an exit ticket that spreads that rush of kids putting their devices away means that learning is continuing during every moment of your classroom time. Um, for all of you online, Jim gave you his top 10 things to think about and be sure that you do as a teacher in the classroom. And if you're interested in learning about anything you heard him share, again, be sure to check out our resources at the bottom of the speaker page. So let's dig in and see what we have. Um, if you go to the transform classroom times, that's really what Jim did. He, every minute of his 40 minutes, there is learning going on. That's amazing. Like, that's hard to do. And um, he used PowerPoint recorder to flip his classroom a little bit. He, used, he talked a lot about Teams if you've never used it. We have an introduction to Teams. We have a course on how to use it exactly like Jim was talking about with rubric grading. Um, if you've never used forms for formative and summative assessments, there's a course here on forms. He talked one note, you saw his screenshots of the notes that um, his kids take. And one note is that great tool that allows you to see real time 24 seven into the work the kids are doing. So we have so many resources here to get you up and running with OneNote. So uh, our, uh, 
all together, there's a lot here to get you started. And I know that you're gonna be really successful as you work to transform classroom time.